Good afternoon. This is Pastor Timothy L. Walker of YHVH Church of Philadelphia in Culpeper, Virginia. Today is Sunday, August 21st, 2022. I want to welcome you. Uh, I say this kind of every Sunday. I'm going to cook with a little gas. I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, for the past five weeks, uh, the series was on God wants to seal your mind. He wants to circumcise your heart and mind with his truth, not the traditions of men. So I gave that and hopefully you learned something out of it. Uh, you can go on YouTube. Uh, YHVH COP channel and you can look at all the um, the messages that I have put out so far uh, Facebook archives does not carry them uh, that long but YouTube does so uh, you can always go there uh, I will post this on YouTube It'll come on YouTube about an hour later after we get finished. I don't want to keep you too long. Also, uh, Bible studies are on Tuesday night. We won't have it this Tuesday night because I will be taking another Tuesday off this Tuesday. It will be August the 23rd, which is my birthday, and I'll be that big 6'5", if God willing that I live till then. I hope so. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for just waking us up to be able to just function in your word, just to be functioning, just to be alive. Hopefully that what be given today in the title of the message that you gave me was, are you ready for the second advent? You got to get ready, 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 ready for it, especially in this day and time. Uh, if you look at what's going on in the world, I mean, we, we, we are living in the last days. I know you've heard that before, but anyway. So I just want to thank you and camp your angels about the soldiers that are out there fighting for our freedom, and camp your angels about us, to where we can. Uh, stand, tighten up our armor against the wicked and principalities that fight against against us because we are your soldiers. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's cook with a little gas. Uh, like I said, uh, this will probably be part one. There's no way I can do this whole series, this whole message in, in 50 minutes. No way I can do it. So anyway, are you ready for the second advent? And that's the second advent of Jesus Christ. Now, you know when he came the first time, he came as a babe. Well, he ain't coming as no babe this time. He's all grown up. He's, uh, the word says, uh, he walked among us. And you got to go to John. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Go down to verse 14, I think it's about verse 14. And the Word became flesh and walked among us. So yes, the Word. So, it's not hard to see that man has not been a good steward of the gift and responsibility God gave him. Now, him and them as man and female and woman to tend and keep. Keep those words in mind. Tend and keep the earth. That's in Genesis uh, 2.15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. God gave man powers to carry out the responsibility that was given 
unto his hand. To have dominion, not over people, but of the land. Man must do the following. Put what was and is now placed into his hands through a finishing process. Watch over it, guard it, protect it, and preserve its beauty. So, in the United States, you know, uh, we just had all these bills passed. And it's really about what we just said, or what I just read. So, the president has put out these things, uh, carbon emissions, uh, uh, just putting a hole in the ozone. But we watch it over it. A little bit too late, but we're trying to put a watch over it. Trying to guard it, trying to protect it. If you know, I'm a news junkie. So what's going on over there in Ukraine, that other half of that seed, and understand what I'm talking about, yeah, Cain and Adam. Cain had a genealogy, Adam had a genealogy. And then lo and behold, there came Jacob and Esau. Esau sold his birthright. Read about that. Read about who Esau is. Where his people went to. So now Russia's over there doing some things. They control the largest nuclear plant in Europe. Talking about shutting it down. Talk, talking about having some generators run so it can keep the, uh, the things cool the reactors, uh, you just can't shut it down and, and walk away from it. The reactors still have to be on. They got to be still cool. If not, you're going to have a, a holocaust over there. So they're already telling people to evacuate and all this and that. But regardless of that, that's a little bit what's going on. So, the example. This was given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now, if you go back to Genesis, Adam was formed in the world. Just like Christians say, we in the world, but we not of the world. Just like Jesus said, oh, you do not understand my speech because you're not of the Father. That's a little nugget. A beautiful place. God let them and us know that as beautiful as the garden was, because he took him out of the world, placed him in the garden, told him to tend and keep it. So he would already had formed and created the other mankind. The hunters, the fishermen, and all that. But he didn't have a farm. Also, through Adam, his plan for salvation was to come through Adam. And he did. So if you look at what they call the uh, the key of David, if you look at, uh, you go to uh, the church's website, you'll see the Holy Spirit holding the key. And that key represents the key of David. Knowing the true birth line of Jesus. The reason he's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords because it comes from uh, uh, Mary her daddy and mother was from Judah which is the king and the Levites which are the priests Lord of Lords, King of Kings the garden would need to be maintained, cultivated, dressed and kept requiring a great deal of work man was not only to preserve control and direct it but also to strive even to ennoble the garden of Eden through work. There is work involved in those activities. There is work involved in maintaining our salvation. God has shown the fact that a person works, the reason why he works and the way he works, all have a great deal to do with his spiritual development. It is important to note 
the difference between salvation and development. Now, God said, uh, if you believe, so you have to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth who Jesus Christ is. Thou shall be saved. It's still a process. Jesus says in Matthew 24, those who endure to the end. But you got to be developing. Okay? We are all saved by grace. But if there is going to be development from where God begins whenever we first receive his spirit, his spirit is the Holy Spirit. That's what drew you to God. Then it requires something on our part to enable the fullness of development to take place. That involves work. And that's all you take with you to meet God, your creator. That's the only thing that you can take with you. You came in this world naked, when you leave this world, you might be dressed up or, or however, but when you meet the maker, your creator, God, is your works. Did you do what he intended you to do? I know that's a hard question. Are you ready for the second advent? Is a hard question. But it shouldn't be. Because I, I put it out there. All the seals. All the trumps. And all the vows. And you can find all that. If you read Matthew 24. And really read what Jesus is saying. This is serious stuff. You know. I don't come down here every Sunday. To entertain myself. Because I already didn't study this. Yeah I got stuff written. And yeah you see me. You know. I, 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 I got it written. But the Holy Spirit put something in me. To, to go and do something else. I'm going to say. What God wants me to say. Right now. Say when, when I was studying on Tuesday. That was Tuesday. A lot of things didn't happen from Tuesday to 2 o'clock today. But anyway, let's keep it moving. Warning. What I'm going to read to you now is a warning. From Micah 4.3a. He shall judge between many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. Revelations 11.18. And the nations were angry, and thy breath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name. That fear ain't, doesn't mean that you are scared. You reverence God. small and great, and should have destroyed them, was destroyed the earth. Now where did I start off? Tend and keep. Look around. Water's all jacked up. Putting all these lead pipes out there. They bursting and stuff. We're killing ourselves. Man is killing itself. For what? Profit. And this ain't no script. Let's get real. You just went through a plague. Coronavirus. Man still ain't learned. It's still out there. It's still killing folks. You can get vaccinated, boosted and all that. If God wants you, he wants you. Oh, it was a wake up call. Now, those, those children 
that God had you in charge of, that you didn't spend that much time with, now you had to spend time with them because they couldn't go to school. Now they had to be schooled at home by you. You couldn't really go to work. You had to work from home. Ah, oh, but man, for the money, they want to talk about the economics. Ah, oh, send them back to school. Send me back to work. Uh. Yeah, we want heaven right here on earth, which is going to be when God first do his thing and clean this thing up and rejuvenate the earth, he ain't going to destroy it. He ain't, he ain't going to let man do a nuclear war. It ain't, ain't going to happen. Just giving you warnings. Hebrews 4.12 And I use the King James and uh, version of the Bible. If I change over to the English version, I'll let you know. If I use the Amplified, I'll let you know. Okay? But right now it's King James. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, what's in that word sword? Take the S off. You got word. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now if you didn't know and if you do know I'm here to remind you God knows your heart. That's why he's the judge. He's the final judge. He is the judge. You can have all kind of letters written up from your church and they read it in the funeral or the memorial service. Yeah, it all sounds nice. But God, who created you, knew you before he placed you in your mother's womb as the one who's going to judge whether you're going to be with him or you're going to be blotted out. And that means in the lake of fire. Now when you be with him. You're going to be living eternal. No one has died. The flesh. Yes. But the soul and spirit. No one has died. Okay. Isaiah. If you really want to know and get about that salvation and development, Isaiah has 66 chapters, which man has cut the Bible down to 66 uh, books. But Isaiah is salvation. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with uh, equality for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Now that he is God, okay, if I'm going too fast, uh, you can kind of interact. Uh, I did put this on here to where you can send some questions to me. Uh, I'll answer them after the uh, the matches. Or you can go to YHVACOP.org, text me, message me, email me. Any question that you have pertaining to this message or it, any other previous message and I'll answer it. I'm not, you know, I, 
I'm not sitting here to claim that I know everything, but I do know some things. I am held accountable for what I say. And I definitely ain't going to buy no traditions of men. Knock them down. Put that out in my first book, Spiritually Circumcise Your Heart and Mind, where you got to strip away those traditions. Okay? Jeremiah 23 verse 29 Is not my word like as a fire saith the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces That's his word Remember I started off with John John 1 See, all the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke presented Jesus as a little different. John presented Jesus to the world as Lord, as God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then that Word walk or dwell amongst us. And Isaiah, he prophesied, Isaiah was a prophet, that a virgin should have a child and she should name his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus said, not Tim Walker, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I ain't talking about them pictures that be hung up in church, cause uh, cause all that is 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 uh, trying to find the right word. Uh, let's just say some BS. That's all about that supremacy thing. So you try to make him white, you know. And I'm not here to, to talk about uh, racial things, but let's be true about some things. It is what it is. Why are they trying to stop certain things to be taught in school? Oh, well, we don't want to make them feel bad. Oh, yeah, well, hey, you know, my ancestors went through a lot of stuff for me to be able to sit here. So if you really have read the Bible, the Israelites was, <laughs> was in uh uh captivity for a lot of different reasons God let them go into captivity why because they wanted to worship other gods they wanted everything that the world wanted and God told them no they wanted kings like the world had kings God said no but since you free man I'm going to let you go ahead and do it but I'm going to give you a warning first what they are going to require of you we want it, we want it. Come on, God, give it to us. They ain't know what they want. God lives in eternity. He has no timeline. There's no time in eternity. Alpha and Omega, from the beginning to the end. <clears throat> okay, all right. A little bit off script. Got to keep it moving. So, the scriptures that I've read are not new. Hopefully they're not new to you and have been heard over and over again. But you have those who ignore what God has said and you have those of you just don't believe. Now, if you're listening to this uh, message, uh, hopefully you believe. See, it's all about salvation. But I'm not going to get online and preach salvation every Sunday. The Holy Spirit should draw you. The Holy Spirit is the one who's going to lead and guide you to truth. I'm only here laying seeds. Someone else might come and water it. I'm going to do my job. 
If I step on your toe, just say out and keep it keep it moving. If you know you're wrong, if you know you're living wrong or whatever, repent. Yeah, you're going to remember. That's so you won't do it again. It's an experience. But just keep it moving. God loves you. God is love, but also because he loves you, he will spank you. Just like your parents. God didn't say time out. But just like your parents, hey, the, the word said don't 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 spare the rod. You spoil the child. Now you might create a monster. Then that's what you got to deal with. Go to Second Timothy chapter three. And I'm going to go ahead and read uh, verses 1 through 7. Uh, Timothy is, uh, the book of Timothy is really what Paul wrote to Timothy about church order and stuff. Okay? So anyway. And the word reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. It's been rough, ain't it? These are perilous times. We are living in the last days. For man should be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, all this is happening. Unthankful and unholy. Lovers of their own selves. Now, the United States, I had to stop here. <laughs> United States, the greatest nation on earth. But then again, we got on the dollars, on the coin, and God we trust. That's just some of us. So they want to say, that if, hey, we're a Christian nation. Then you got somewhere we want to go back as it was. Uh, as it was, wasn't good for everybody. That Constitution and Declaration of Independence wasn't written for everybody. But it should be for everybody. That uh, you see in the courthouses, you know, justice, the scales, it ain't all equal. If you ain't got no money, you got a court appointed lawyer, you got someone over there who's paying a lawyer thousand two thousand dollars an hour uh, who you think going to probably win this thing not unless you just plain out guilty but okay I digress verse 3 without natural affection truth breakers false accusers incident fears despisers of those that are good Traitors, hating, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Because, you know, we got this, uh, you know, we <laughs> You think he going to bless the United States now out there allowing same-sex marriage? Allowing? Oh, it's the law. Oh, you know. They had the right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody has the right to do whatever they want to do. And they make laws so you can do these things. But let's break it down. What God says. It's an abomination. Now homosexuality. Not that I'm going there. But I, I'm there. Homosexuality has been going on since Genesis. Since the beginning. But you just bring it on out there. You flaunt it. Hey. That's on you. Not every sin is the same sin. Now, wherever you get that from, that's that tradition. Sin is sin. No, 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 no. And I said it once, said it more, and I'm going to keep on saying to it sinks in. Because of this thing we got right here, this skin, this flesh, that our soul and spirit is in-housed in, cause us to sin.
the flesh will never be saved. You ain't you you you, you you're trying to reconnect to God. Salvation, you salvaging your soul. Wherever your soul go, your spirit is the intellect of your soul. So wherever your soul goes, your spirit going with you. Okay. So anyway. So there's different penalties for different sins. That's what I'm saying. Will he forgive you? Oh yeah. If you truly repent. Remember I told you he's a heart knower. He know your heart. So anyway. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. And lead captive silly women and men. Laden with sins. Led away with divers lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, I'm going to give you some more truth. Satan know you better than you know yourself. He know your weakness. See, before it was Satan, it was Lucifer. Who is a terrible, never be born a woman. But he got demoted. And is the only one by name who has a first class ticket to hell. And hell is the lake of fire. And there is no lake of fire yet. Now, Luke chapter 16 talks about a golf. You can call it paradise, whatever you want to call it. It's a golf. That's divided. Some souls and spirit on one side, some souls and spirit on another side, which means some are with God and some on the bad side. Now, it's probably hell to them because they can see. I mean, we had TV shows to show different things like that. But they can see over there and Jesus gave the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. It's a parable, but it's true. Rich man, hey, you know, the aggregation of his mind, he was in hell. Because he missed the mark. Now, there's some that's out here that's going to believe, just like the Sadducees. When you die, that's it. Well, you got the right to believe what you want to believe. But if you're a Christian, Christ-like minded, and want to live a Christian life like Christ and like the Word of God says, yeah, you're going to miss it. It's a narrow road. Well, you know, you get off the path. You think I'm with us sir? Come on. I got to pray up every day. I got to have that hedge up. So, are you ready for the second event? Just like Job got tested, Satan said, hey, take that heads that you got around him, and I'll guarantee you he'll curse you. God let the heads down, and uh, Satan put some stuff on him. But he never cursed God. Even his wife said, why don't you go and curse God and die? Ain't that something? Would you want your loved one to tell you that? You got balls from head to toe. I mean, you suffering. But you still believe him because your faith is strong. It's impossible to please God without faith. That's it. That's the word. And then, you know, he had some friends in his ears. And God had to wake him up at the last part of the of the book of Job, which is one of one of the oldest books, because it covers a lot of time in the word. So anyway, 
What could the earth be like if man worked in harmony with God's word through his revelation knowledge of truth, commandments, and statutes? These are questions now. What will the earth look like, say, 50 years into the kingdom of God when the hearts of men are on God's way and love of neighbor is a way of life. The Bible indicates people will be back on the farm. Now, you know, we talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. If you look, and I, I know I said some things, and I went back, I had to research, because I will repent, and I will cut them online and say I was wrong. But I looked and looked and looked. Jesus always talked about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Now, and within that was salvation, but he never said anything about salvation. For you to gain salvation, you had to do this for you. No. But to enter the kingdom of God, that's what Jesus preached. The kingdom of God is like this. He was telling you how it's like. Now, it ain't like what's going on now. I can tell you that. Because we ain't tending and keeping what God has given us. But don't worry. Now, go back to Micah 4, chapter 4. Now I'm going to read verse 4. I start off with the warning, Micah 4, verse 3, Alpha, the first part of that verse. Now I'm going to read the fourth verse. Tell us that every man will sit under his own vine and fig tree, meaning that everyone will have the opportunity to own his own land. Well, that will be true. Because when God rejuvenates this earth, there ain't going to be no seas. All this going to be, you know, you know, it's, it's it's miles and miles and miles down under the sea. All that land's gonna be brought back up. Hey, Y'all need to read Revelation. Jeremiah 31. Oh, you can read that in Revelations 20, 21, and 22. Jeremiah 31 and 12. Therefore, they should come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil. Wheat, wine, and oil. I just want, yeah, it's a little calmer right there. What do you think the wheat, wine, and oil is? What, uh, what does it represent to you? See, because in Amos 8, was talking about the famine. He wasn't talking about the famine of food. Famine of hearing the word of God. See, at 2 o'clock, unless something didn't happen or prayers and went out, whatever, that I can't get online, you're going to hear the word of God. Now, I have some other things. That, that's why I said it ain't going to be just part one to this. It's going to be a little serious, too. Hopefully it don't take five parts. The wheat. You remember, you know, the last supper? So what is wheat? That's your food. Wine. Represents the blood of Jesus. All represents the Holy Spirit. Okay. Anyway. Wheat, wine, and for all, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a 
watered garden, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Jeremiah was a prophet. Now, those are things I was telling you about in uh, Revelation. So, uh, you know, they talk about the tree. There was two trees in Genesis. It's so only going to be one tree in Revelation. Each month, you're going to have to take the leaves as your wheat, as your food. That's to keep you in line so you won't be bored. And when they talk about the nations come in Revelation, the nations are the ethnic people. Those who are not of Israel. Because, you know, in Jerusalem, they're going to have 12 gates. So, you know, it ain't like it's only going to be 144 souls saved. No, that ain't it. 12,000 from each tribe God has chosen and got 12 gates to enter Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem going to be way much bigger than what it is today. But that's God's favorite place in the universe. Okay. Amos 9 and I'm going to read 14 through 15. And I'm going to kind of wrap this up. I see I'm 42 minutes into it. Verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, said the Lord thy God. Now in the Old Testament when you see Lord, L-O-R-D, all capital letters, that's Y-H-V-H. Not no W. It's Yahweh. Not Yahweh. But, you know, sacred name. I am. When Moses said, who did I tell the people uh, that sent me? He said, I am that I am. That's who said. So, the Holy Spirit will speak through God's elite, men and women. Just as it happened in Acts 2, verse 3. Right? Prophesy. So, Peter said, this is that. And that was written in Joel. Chapter 2, verse 28. When they all delivered unto the Antichrist in the synagogue of Satan. That cloven tongue that went out in every language is going to happen again. Ain't going to be no gibberish jabber. Ain't going to be no confusion. Straight up, everybody's going to get the message. And uh, Satan's coming as God. You ain't never seen Jesus. He's a pretty boy. The word in Ezekiel 28 tells me when God created him, he ain't leave nothing off of him. He's wiser than Daniel. And Daniel was considered a very wise man. That's why I said he know you better than you know yourself. See, in the millennium, there ain't going to be no flesh. You'll be able to have 100% recall. Right now, you only got about 10. He had to blot out some things. Like I said, just because you was, as they say, born again. Nah, you just came through your mother's flesh so you can get that uh, mother's womb so you get the flesh. 
Just like he told Jeremiah, I placed you in your mother's womb. I deemed you a prophet before I placed you in your mother's womb. People, get ready. Really read the word. Romans 8, 28. On down. Read that. Because it ain't for everybody. Part of it, the first part is, is true. Okay. Going to finish this up. In Revelations 1. So, you know, John... So now all the papers went when he wrote this. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, if it is in Samaria, I mean Smyrna, and unto uh, Pargolmus, and unto Tigris, and unto Cedrus, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Lodicea. Out of those seven churches, yes, yeah, seven angels, seven candlesticks, all this is in Revelation. Jesus only approved two of those churches, Smyrna and Philadelphia. Now this is the church name that I chose for this church name to be Philadelphia, which is brotherly love. What did those churches teach? They taught about the synagogue of Satan. They taught about you getting ready for the second advent. They taught about those two seed lines. In John 44, Jesus said, you are of, which means progeny, your father, the devil. Cain and Abel. If Cain was of Abel, I mean, if Cain and Adam, the two genealogies. If Cain was of Adam, Cain wouldn't have his own genealogy. But anyway, keep it moving. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head, now here comes the description of Jesus now. Verse 14, his head and his hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as the flame of fire and his feet were like the fine brass as if they burnt in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters now paint that picture in your mind ain't no blonde hair blue eye white man sitting up there as Jesus and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword like I said take the S off of that word and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him, I fell on my feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. See, on that cross, he defeated death, which is the devil. Go back and read Revelation, I think it's 9 or 12, they give you all the names, the dragon, the devil, Satan, the serpent. Write these things, 
verse 19. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mysteries of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now, don't try to misinterpret and we turn that around. This is Jesus talking. And the seven candlesticks, what's that source? Are the seven churches. Okay? I'm going to stop there. Could have started there. I'm going to stop there. That's part one. Next, next week, going to be part two. I started Revelation 12, 17, 17. Verse 7 through 17. Telling you that. So if you come back. I will post it online. Read that. Read Daniel 11. Verses 21 through 24. And uh, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2. 3 through 4. Revelations 10. 11 through 7. And Revelations 11, 3 through 19. And uh, try to get to Revelations 19, 11 through 21. If I don't, I don't. It'll just be a part three. But anyway, that's what I wanted to put out today. Now, Jesus said he wanted us to be watchmen. I know I went past 50 men. So, watchmen, watch. Be aware of your surroundings. Now we all got our own little world that we got. You know, we got some have kids and family. That's one world. Wherever you work, that's another world. You got to deal with all these different things. You got to be all these different things. Hopefully, you're doing what makes you happy. But God has a plan for you. Now, when you said. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You entered his army. So you got to be a watchman. Tighten up that armor that's in Ephesians that Paul talked about. He ain't say take it off. There ain't no jetpacks in there. You ain't flying away nowhere. Did Daniel fly out of the lion's den? Did the three Hebrew boys fly out of the fiery furnace? Nope. So, Jesus ain't coming back taking the church somewhere. You know what I'm talking about. That rapture stuff. You ain't raptured nowhere. Just get ready, get ready. Fill your heart and mind. Circumcise your heart and mind with God's truth. You read. You pray to God for his Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. You pray and say, hey, is Pastor Tim Walker full of it? Is he telling me some BS? Because my pastor told me that, he, well, hey, your pastor is going to be held accountable. But when you are standing before God, your pastor ain't going to be there. Pastor Tim Walker ain't going to be there. You're going to be standing alone and you got to an answer for you. Your sins and all that are yours. But anyway, I want to thank you for listening. Like I said, in an hour, give me about an hour, and I'm going to post it on YouTube. Uh, and uh, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you have the rest of the day. This Sunday, while I'm at, it's raining, so I ain't going to go too many places. But I'm going to deal with what I got to deal with. But, you know, have a great and blessed day. Dear Heavenly Father, the word has went out as a two-edged sword. To pierce the heart, to pierce the mind. To let your Holy Spirit come in and resonate in those two places. So the truth can set them free. I try to hang my flesh on that cross. So that your Holy Spirit would speak through me. Yes, I only speak English. I'm not babbling. No cloven tongue. No babbling. Just speaking your word. 
that's written. So, and camp your angels about us this week that we be safe. Those who have lost or I don't like to say lost or their loved ones had passed on I give you my condolences and that God's Holy Spirit will comfort you through your grievance but those things I pray but as long as you are alive always give God the praise and the honor that he rightfully deserves. That is my, my prayer that I end with. In Jesus' name, amen.